Your Excellency, Prime Minister, Hail Mariam Tusalem of the Federal Republic of Ethiopia. Your Excellency, UN Secretary General, Stepan Kimun. Your Excellency, Leon, Director of UNIDO. The Minister of Finance of Senegal, standing in for President Macky Sall. Uh, President of the World Bank, Kimion, Jin Kimion. Excellency, Director of the European Development, my brother, Carlos Lopez of UNCA. Excellencies, leaders of delegations, it is indeed a great pleasure and honor for us to participate in this meeting where UNIDO is showing us its leadership in this critical area of industrialization, which is inclusive, sustainable. If we look at the discussions on the post-2015 development agenda and sustainable development goals, they correctly locate inclusive economic development as central to the eradication of poverty, disease, and hunger. The pilot that UNIDO has started with uh, Senegal and Ethiopia, uh, to us is an actual practical step, not only towards implementing the post-2015, but for implementing Agenda 2063, which is the Africa we want. For Africa, given the challenges we face, our development agenda, therefore, includes human resource development, which Ethiopia and Senegal are doing very well, especially in looking at locating science as, as a central part of higher education. It also includes infrastructure, and both countries are also doing very well in the development of um, infrastructure, agricultural modernization and agro-processing is what uh, industrialization uh, will be about, not only in these two countries, but also in many African countries. And of course, the development of human resource policies and institutions so that we move beyond the exploitation of our mineral resources and natural resources and exploiting them as raw materials so that we can indeed industrialize. And I hope that soon the lessons that will be learned from this pilot will be shared generally with other countries and that the pilot will then expand to a few more our countries. Of course, Africa is also home to the largest number of least developed countries, 34 of them in total. But it is committed to a path of structural transformation that will enable it to decisively break with its recent history of underdevelopment and marginalization. <coughs> Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, this, the Africa vision uh, agenda 2063, which was recently adopted by heads of state, is one of the reasons why we have embarked on a, a new way of discussion with our partners. We are redefining our relations with our partners, with international institutions, and this is another opportunity where we have uh, had very frank discussions and good discussions with UNIDO a few years ago. And Africa has to industrialize and beneficiate. If we do not, given our population growth and our large youth population, instead of getting a demographic dividend, we will have a demographic disaster. 
in fact, if we do not move very quickly, the disaster is already, has already started. If we look at what is happening across the Sahel and across the Mediterranean, it is a tragedy whose roots are in the underdevelopment of Africa and marginalization of Africa. For these young men and women to take these perilous journeys across to foreign shores, it's because there are not enough jobs on the continent. They are not properly skilled to create jobs or to get decent jobs. So as Africa, we have no other choice but to embark on a transformative economic route and embark on programs that will eradicate poverty. Because if we do not, as I say, this disaster will unfold and will engulf all of us, not just Africa, as it has started. So I'm very happy with UNIDO, but also I want to appreciate uh, the work that ECA has been doing with our ministers. They've been discussing this issue of industrialization. And I think now is time to move. And I'm very excited to hear uh, the president of the World Bank talking about how much they're going to put in this program of industrialization. And indeed, if we all do and work in the same direction, we will achieve a, a prosperous Africa. But of course, having said that, Africa needs to also take its own responsibility for its development. This means that African countries need to accept that we either unite or collectively perish because no single country or region can be an island of prosperity in an ocean of poverty, insecurity, and underdevelopment. This includes greater commitment to making intra-African trade work, including cross-border infrastructure projects in transport, energy, ICT, as some regions are already doing. Free movement of people and goods, and removing all the obstacles really uh, that are there, the non-tariff barriers to trade. And of course, creating an environment for the development of truly pan-African businesses. This includes such initiatives as the free continental trade area, which we're starting to negotiate this year, and the implementation of the Amasuku Declaration for a single African aid aviation market, because whatever we produce in this industrialization project must be able to be traded amongst African countries. Therefore, transport, rail, road, air should be also developed. Though agriculture is central, but Africa is endowed with a lot of other resources. And of course, one biggest resource that we have commonly is are the oceans. And of course, Africa must uh, develop its blue economy, but we must get into the automotive pharmaceutical industry. Africa has the biggest burden of disease, but we do not produce drugs to deal with that. Um, and therefore, the development of the pharmaceutical industry, we do have the raw materials, so we need to get into um, that as well. We've got oil, gas, textiles, and of course other sectors that are identified under Agenda 2063. And I think we should be able to do this on a multi-country level. We must move on our commitment uh, to vocational training as well as other levels of uh, uh, higher education. 
And I also call upon our partners to partner us in this uh, skills revolution because the industrialization will not succeed if we do not get into um, skills, particularly the science. And of course, we must develop our work with our private sector and have committed to organize, we are committed to organize the first development dialogue platform with the African private sector next year because they are critical for our transformation. And this conversation must also be held with our leaders of higher education institutions because they need to prepare our young people in the same direction as our industrialization plans. Excellencies, we therefore have a fair idea what to do, and many of these are contained in our first 10 year plan, and I think Africa is committed to the implementation, and with partners around this table committed, we are convinced that we will indeed uh, eliminate poverty from our continent, I think.